Hello everyone, welcome to Coders Camp. We are at 4th day of February Lead Code Challenge and the problem we are going to cover in this video is contiguous array. So the input given here is an, a binary array nums which has values only zeros and ones and we have to return the maximum length of the contiguous subarray with an equal number of zeros and ones. So let's understand this with an example. So here's the given input array nums with binary values zeros and ones and we have to find first the contiguous array which has equal number of ones and zeros. So if you consider this array the subarrays that we could form is 0 comma 1 or 1 comma 0 which are having equal number of ones and 0. Uh, so here both of them are having length 2 so the maximum length the maximum subarray we could form is of length 2. So consider another array with values 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. So in this case, what could be the uh, maximum subarray which has only zeros and equal number of zeros and ones? So in this case, the first value we could see is 1 comma 0, which has equal number of uh, zeros and ones. And the other one is 0 comma 1, which is also having uh, equal number of zeros and ones. And the other combination you can have is 0, 0. 1 1 in between also we have 0 comma 1 that is again equal to length 2 so the maximum so far we found is from here to here which is two zeros and two ones we cannot include this one at the end because it will increase the count of one so the maximum you could form here is of length 4 which is subarray with two zeros and two ones so yes how are we going to approach this the pretty straightforward approach is brute force approach where we are going to iterate uh, the given array with two for loops with i and j and we are going to compare each value from uh, i to j uh, that and increase the, and count the variables of number of ones and zeros so uh, once are ones and zeros matches that is if uh, four ones equal to four zeros then we find that there exists an array and we update our variable max which is going to hold the maximum value so far we find or maximum length of subarray for so far we found. But this is going to take big O of n square time complexity which is obviously not an optimal solution. So how do we approach this in an optimal way? So if you consider having the same solution by using single loop that is not going to work because here they have asked for equal number of ones and equal number of zeros. What if we have an, a, a subarray which is having 0, 1, 0, 1 interchangeably. In this case you cannot simply increment the count of ones and zeros by keep switching uh, zeros and ones as the value. We cannot find where it starts and where it ends. So we have to have an optimal solution. So let's see how are we going to approach it. So we are going to approach this in a optimal way. So I would say this problem is quite a simpler form of subarray sum or cadence algorithm. We have seen cadence algorithm already in our videos. So we are going to use the same logic here to get this done. So the idea here is let's uh, say if we have to find an array which is having equal number of ones and zeros assume there is minus one and ones instead of zeros and one so there is one comma one comma minus one comma minus one comma one so if you add the sum of first four values or the uh, subarray of size four this would give you some zero because it has equal number of ones and equal number of minus ones so if you sum up them that will give you zero so this is the idea we are going to implement the first thing we are going to do is we are going to update all our zeros to minus one in the given array so that whenever we get a zero which means we can guess that there are equal number of zeros and ones in the given array so let's consider this example we are converting this zeros to minus one and adding the values so Starting from the first value, the first value is 1, so we are simply going to put 1. By adding this first value with the second value, the sum becomes 2. And the third value, the sum becomes 3, that value is also 1. And adding the fourth value, it is a minus 1. So we reduce the value to 2. And again, the next value is also minus 1. We reduce the value to 1. And the next value we add, so 2 again. The next value we add is 1 again. So uh, this is the sum of our 
given array so now as i said we have to look for zero because that neutralize the number of zeros and ones and give us that this is the array which has equal number of ones and zeros but here we won't find zeros because we are not adding the sum of a perfect subarray that has equal number of ones and zeros we are actually adding the values in the given input array from here how do we identify the point where the value gets neutralized which is nothing but where there are equal number of zeros and equal number of ones so instead of looking for zero we are going to look for equal values that is here there is a value 2 and we have to look for a point where it gets neutralized so here is the point that gets neutralized because it is increasing in between which means there are few ones and it is decreasing again to get our two back which means in between these two points there exists a subarray which has equal number of zeros and ones so let me check if you see the second value is one and the fourth value is zero which means from this point to this point there exists an array which has equal number of zeros and ones so let's check on with another example if you see there starts a one at the very first point and there comes a next one which means there exists an subarray from next to one till this point which has equal number of zeros and ones so if you observe that in the given input array from the second position till where we have one here there exists a subarray which has equal number of ones and zeros and same goes with this two to this two let's see from this two till the last point there is a, there exists another subarray which is having value 1001 which is also satisfies the condition the same rule applies to this 3 to this 3 if you observe there exists a subarray 0 comma 0 comma 1 comma 1 which also satisfies our condition so this is the logic we are going to put calculate the sum and we are going to check where there exist two values and between those two values there exists a subarray that satisfies our condition how are we going to exactly uh, implement this in our code so we need a data structure that is going to store the sum of the array as well as the indexes so why we need index because our output is the maximum length of the subarray so to calculate the subarray we need the index so that we can easily subtract the index of this to index of this to get this length of the subarray so the best approach is to have a hash map so we are going to have a hash map which is going to store the sum as well as the indexes and calculate the length accordingly so first we are going to put one and the ones index is zero and then there comes two twos index is one threes index is two so there comes a two so we are going to update our variable result with the value that is the difference between the current position of 2 to 1. So the difference is 3 minus 1. So the length is 2. We know that is 1 comma 0. And there comes 1. So we are going to look for 1 exists in the array. Yes, 1 also exists. So we are going to find the difference between this index to the index in the hash map. So the index of 1 here is 4. So from 4 to 0, the difference is 4. So the length now is 4 which is the maximum than 2 so we are updating it to 4. Same way we are comparing the index from here that is 5 to 2's index is 1 so difference is again 4. So the next index is the next sum is 3 that is also there in the hash map. So the difference between this 3 to this 6 to index 2 is again 4 we are updating 4. So yes this is how it works I hope I explained it clearly so let's go to the code now. So yes, the first step is converting all zeros to minus 1 for our calculation. So I am going to do it using a for loop. Okay, so first step is done. The second step is calculating the sum and putting that to a map. So I am declaring a map here. So here we are going to update our max value whenever we find the value is equal and the length is going to be updated to this variable and that is what we are going to return as a result. So here in between we are going to calculate the sum and put that into our map. So once we calculate the sum we are first going to check if the value already exists in the map or not. So if it exists then we are going to update our variable max with the length i is the current index of the sum we have found and we are going to get the index from our map and subtract it if not if the value is not already there in the map 
then we are going to simply add it to our map. Yes, this is it. Finally, our max variable will be having the value we want to return as a result. Let's give it a try. Yes, so let's submit. Yes, the solution has been accepted and runs in 47 milliseconds. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you like this video. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe and let me know in comments. Thank you.